tickets for up to 70% off what you'd pay at retail stores. Shop Once Upon a Child March 11th through 13th and be among the first to shop all your favorite brands of children's jackets. We've got an amazing selection and better prices than anywhere else in the area. That's Once Upon a Child in Maple Shade and Deptford. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. At 7-Eleven, six days of coffee equals a seventh cup free when you scan the 7-Eleven app. Drink coffee twice a day, that's two free a week. Mmm, math tastes good. 7-Eleven, you brew you. Terms and conditions apply. See 7-Eleven.com for more details. Mazda believes you need more nature in your lives. The performance and capability of the first ever Mazda CX-50, an all-new crossover SUV, encourages you to go further into, and more often into, nature. The first ever Mazda CX-50, more human in nature. Visit MazdaUSA.com. Portions of the following program were pre-recorded. WIOQFM, Philadelphia, in simulcast on WISX Philadelphia. Live, Live. in the 215, from the Rush Order Tees Studio, where you can design your t-shirts for any deadline. This this is Q102, Philly's number one hit. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 9th, 2022 Newtown Township Board of Supervisors meeting. It's good to see everybody here, some of you for the first time, maybe. Um, uh, it's customary that we have a moment of silence, and this evening uh, we'd ask you to join the board in um, uh, just keeping in mind that we have freedoms that we too often take for granted and just take, we just, we'd ask us all to consider taking a moment, give a thought for peace in Eastern Europe and put our, put our own agendas in, into some perspective and help us reconcile what's really important. So if we could just have a, a moment of silence. Thank you. Now join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Lewis, are there any changes to the agenda? No changes, Mr. Chairman. Any special actions? None. That will move us into our first round of public comment. Uh, I had, I had you under minor approvals, which should, it's, it's, the, next, it's the next one. 
So if you if you can wait, maybe there won't be any public. Maybe there won't be that much public comment this the first time around. Are, are there any? Is there any public comment? Seeing none, the case is moot, <laughs> and, and we will and we'll go to minor approvals. That worked out. Please uh, tell us your name and yeah, there's the mic. Good. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Mahan Hardaway, and I'm a Life Scout with Troop 99 here in Newtown, working on my Eagle Scout rank, and I'm also an avid baseball player in the Newtown community. I'm here as a representative of the Council Rock Newtown Athletic Association to gain approval for a permit to conduct my Eagle Scout project, which is to build two side-by-side -side batting cages at Veterans Park, which is located next to Newtown Elementary School. The project will also include building a walkway leading up to the batting cage to allow park patrons with disabilities to access the cages as well. Currently in Newtown, there is one public batting cage at Chandler Baseball Complex. However, at Veterans Park, where there are four baseball and softball fields, there is only one batting cage. So my proposal to put in these two batting cages will be significant help to the town baseball and softball community because they will provide a free place to practice batting and pitching for anybody in the community at any time. In our community, there are several baseball and softball organizations that will benefit from these two batting cages, including the Council Rock Newtown Athletic Association, my beneficiary, which has, been, has many baseball and softball leagues, and also the Council Rock Newtown District's middle school and high school programs. So far, I've dedicated over 100 hours to planning, researching, and communicating with many people about my project. I have met with many professionals about the construction of the cages, including a professional landscaper and professional engineer. And the engineer, Mr. Dumac, is here today, along with many of my family, my friends, and members of the scout and baseball, scouting and baseball community, who I'd like to thank for coming to support me. Um, and Mr. Dumac gave me this plot plan. The batting cage is 34 by 80 feet long, and the walkway will be approximately 100 feet long, starting at the roundabout. And this batting cage is located uh, in between the top two, uh, the, the top um, baseball field next to Newtown Elementary School, and the four or the three baseball and softball fields uh, in the center of Veterans Park. And we decided this at the Parks and Rec board meeting um, a couple or, uh, in the spring last year. Also, so far, I've also done a lot of fundraising for this project. And I've raised $13,500 uh, from family members, community members, and local businesses and my goal is to reach $20,000 in total. If you all approve my project, then my plan for the remainder of the project is to first fundraise and reach my $20,000 goal, and next I will purchase all of the necessary equipment and finish planning out the construction process by the end of spring this year. And finally, I will construct the cages this summer and host a grand opening afterward for the batting cages, which you will all be invited to come to. That ends what I would like to say about my project. Do you all have any questions? Anybody have any questions? I, mean, I was going to just comment. It's, it seems very well thought out and very complete. I mean, even down to the equipment that you'll be, I guess, renting. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I've, I mean, it's a professional appearance. I mean, some 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 professionals that have come up have not been maybe not have been as good, but but thank you. Thank you. Could I make a comment, Mr. Chair? Yes, sure. Uh, I'm the, a father of an Eagle Scout, so I know mm -hmm. all the work you're doing and your family's doing right now. Uh, I want to say congratulations for getting this far. Really impressive how big the, the project is, um, and want to thank you for considering doing that to one of our parks and improving it for the public. So. Thanks and good luck. And you have my support. Thank you. 
Anybody else? Uh, okay. I just think it's fantastic, and thank you so much. And everybody's going to get to enjoy this uh, due to your hard work. And uh, it's a pleasure hearing about it. Thank you. And just to, <clears throat> just to repeat for em emphasis, uh, you have the Park and Rec Committee's approval, and you've got the uh, Athletic Association's approval. So yes. very good. Um, I guess the action the board needs to take is for approval of the Eagle Scout uh, batting cage project. Mr. Lewis, is that? That's, <clears throat> that's correct. <clears throat> Very good. So would someone like to make that motion? I make that motion. All right, cage, we yes, second. Sir. All right, thank you. Uh, any further discussion from the board? Any from the public? Maybe after we approve it, you can give them a round of applause. Uh, all, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. And good luck with all your next steps. Thank you. All right. Uh, next we have reports of committees, boards, and commissions. I don't see a planning commission report. And maybe we'll just give a, a, a minute or two. Okay. Mr. Chairman, there yes. is no planning commission report. The last yeah. meeting was canceled. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that, that comes to board member reports, and, and I, have, I have two things to report. One is uh, I re the borough reached out to me, uh, and they had an author. They had a letter of support for their local. I always want to say services, but it's local share grant um, that they wanted us to support. Uh, I asked them for some additional information and, and data, and I have not gotten it. So. Um, they were asking me to sign a letter of support for a project that I had not read anything about other than, than a, sh a short couple of sentence email. Um, so I hesitate. I mean, I, I'd like to see what other board members think, but uh, I hesitate to sign something that I don't know some, enough information about, even though probably I support it. Anybody have any thoughts that you want to make me sign it? <laughs> no, I think you're doing the right thing. So you have my support. I'm waiting. Okay. All right, very good. Uh, the second thing that I'd like to report, second topic I'd like to report about is the, I attended the uh, Newtown Fire Association meeting last Monday the 28th. Uh, and one thing that uh, perked, perked my interest was that um, Chief Forsyth presented a new stipend, new stipend plan for weekend coverage that they hope to phase in by May 1st. Um, this plan was made possible by additional funds that were put into the 2022 township budget. So um, just thought I'd report about that and um, just let, let people know what's going on with the fire service. That's all I have. Um, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, on February 26, I attended the annual convention of the Bucks County Association of Township Officials, and uh, by a vote of 51% to 49%, the members approved the resolution supporting the legalization of cannabis in Pennsylvania. Many states, including New Jersey, have legalized recreational adult use of cannabis with positive social outcomes and increased tax revenue. The resolution asked PSATS, which is the state organization that uh, uh, tries to get the legislature passed legislation, to seek legislation to legalize the adult use of cannabis, provided that such legislation allow for municipal land use decision making on manufacturing, distribution, and retail facilities as well as a mechanism to share tax revenue with municipalities. 
And according to our Lieutenant Governor, that tax revenue could be as much as $250 million per year to the state. Uh, the second thing I'd like to report on is uh, an, an update on the Love is Love resolution, which was passed by uh, Newtown Township on March 11, 2020. Every year I try to host something to commemorate this passage. And uh, on Monday night, uh, Representative uh, Senator uh, Santosiro attended my meeting and informed us that he is in the process of getting a state grant that will help fund the Rainbow Room in Doylestown and bring a new Rainbow Room to our area, probably in Lower Makefield. Um, uh, if you recall, the Rainbow Room in Doylestown was started seven years ago by Planned Parenthood as a resource and meeting place for LGBTQ plus youth. With the second Rainbow Room in our area, uh, we'll make it easier for these youth to take advantage of this facility. And I know that Mr. Santosero has been trying to get uh, a similar resolution passed at the state level. I think he's done it every year for three years and has uh, uh, not been successful with it. That's all I have to report. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Mack. Ms. Snyder? First, I'd like to report on the Joint Zoning Council, uh, which I attended last week. Uh, electric vehicle charging stations were discussed and uh, we asked the solicitor to work on a draft ordinance for review at the next meeting to give us more information about that. That's the first report. The second is Parks and Rec. And of course, we are registering today for the following upcoming programs, Learn to Draw, Super Soccer Stars, Adult Slow Flow Yoga, Hot Process Soap Making. Also, summer is right around the corner, so camp registration is open for day camp, ages four through eight. Upcoming events include e-recycling on March 19th and Touch a Truck on April 14th. Discount movie tickets are available to purchase at the Parks and Rec office, and discount Sesame Place tickets are coming soon. That's all I have to report. When was the touch a truck? Touch a truck. Touch that's, a truck. That's always a fun event. April 14th. Great. Mr. Calabro. I have nothing to report, Mr. Chair. All right. Thank you, Mr. Calabro. Uh, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, regarding... Uh, upcoming events and community service organizations in the area. The NBA has stopped doing the Easter egg hunt. Uh, they stopped a couple years ago for COVID, but uh, they decided to uh, pass the torch. So the Newtown Rotary is picking it up and going to have the Easter egg hunt open to the public for free. Uh, it'll be April 9th in the morning, Saturday, April 9th. So uh, stay tuned for, you know, info on that. But it is open to everybody. I think if some people may remember what it was like, it's pretty much going to be the same thing just not the NBA running it. But, but they are helping out and whatnot. But uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That brings us to public hearings. And uh, Mr. Sander, I, I hand it over to you. I'll punch you the ball. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, this evening, uh, we have a uh, public hearing that has been advertised. Uh, on the application of BPG Newtown Inc. Uh, that is for the uh, seeking the approval of the Board of Supervisors for an intermunicipal transfer of a liquor license uh, to premises in the township located at, um, and I'll find it here. Three West Road uh, in Newtown, PA. That's in the Newtown Shopping Center. Um, this evening, uh, we have representing the applicant, uh, Ed Taraskis, uh, Esquire. Um, before we turn it over to Ed, I will mark uh, as exhibits uh, B for Board 1 uh, will be a copy of the application, uh, including all the documentation that was received by the 
uh, township from the applicant and exhibit B2 will be a copy of the proof of publication showing that notice of this evening's public hearing was published in the advance of Bucks County on February 20th, 2022 and February 27th, 2022. Uh, Mr. Draskis. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the board. I represent uh, BPG Newtown Inc., which is applied to Newtown Township for the intermunicipal transfer of PLCB restaurant liquor license number R-18026 for use at 3 West Road in Newtown. And this, in the application, this license has been issued uh, to uh, Wagon Wheel Inc. in Quakertown. I have with me this evening uh, Mr. John Morrison, who is the president of uh, BPG, and he is going to testify as to what the project the, entails. And uh, Mr. Morrison? Thank you. Come on. Uh, I'm the pre BPG Newtown. BPG stands for Blue Point Grill. Um, uh, do, do, we want, do we want to have the witness sworn? Swear. Yeah, please. Swear, Thank swear. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Morrison, you. Uh, okay, sir. BPG is applying to, uh, to Newtown for the intermunicipal transfer of the liquor license. Okay. And uh, was is the obviously the restaurant is to be constructed. That's correct. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> and this is per the plans which were submitted in the application itself. We're in the planning stage now. Um, it, it's. Again, this is a little early for, I mean, we're in the midst of uh, floor plans and mechanicals and all those things, but we're, it's the former corner bakery site. Um, Blue Point Grill, again, I'm a restaurateur in Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, have uh, opened up, I'm a seafood guy. I opened up a fish seafood market over in Princeton 40 years ago. And, um, have the Blue Point Grill, we have the Witherspoon Grill and Christine. So we, we've, we've looked, I hate to tell the story, but we've looked for a long time in Newtown and we're really excited about this, so. Uh, now, what is your proposed ca capacity for patrons, approximately? From what we can understand, uh, Corner Bakery had 150 people capacity inside. We won't exceed that um, and we're somewhat close to it. Again, we're maneuvering around the floor plans to see what we can do. Okay, now, uh, will there be an interior bar? Yes. And what's the capacity for seating? 10 to 14, it's really not a bar. We're not in the bar business. Um, this is a place to meet someone before you go to dinner uh, or maybe grab a quick bite, but it's not a big bar at all. Okay, and uh, you're gonna have tables, seating for? Yeah, for tables, I don't know, but seating. Okay, you know. yeah. all right. And that's approximately what, about 140? Well, that would be about 140, 135. Yeah. Okay. And the outs there's going to be an outside patio with dining? Correct. But you, that's, that's what is to be determined? Correct. You? As, as uh, we spoke uh, a couple weeks ago with an informal review from the town, and we're in the process of accommodating the questions that we had there. And what would be the square footage uh, inside for the serving and the kitchen? Okay, the uh, serving area will probably be about 3,000, 3,200 square feet, and the kitchen will be 1,800. Okay. And uh, how many employees do you project having, full-time and part-time? Um, 20 full-time, 20 part-time. And will you be hiring these individuals locally? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, will there be any entertainment, so to speak of? Um, not nightly music not, and, and nothing noisy, quiet, jazz. We, we do have jazz uh, on occasion out in the patio, but we've, uh, you know, the landlord itself has restrictions on noise, um, and we're not, we're not there to dance. We're there to serve uh, seafood, frankly. Okay. And what would your hours of operation be? How many days? Uh, seven days a week. Uh, we're... we're Asking for 11 to midnight, we're dinner only at this moment, and we probably will do that for, for quite some time. And what kind of food uh, is the menu 
comprised of? Um, 15 different kinds of oysters, 25 different kinds of fish were in the seafood business. Okay. So it's a real fish house, frankly. Now, will you be, ser <clears throat> excuse me, will you be serving food whenever you're open and serving alcoholic beverages? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so at this point in time, you're talking about dinner, but will you expand to the lunch trade? Well, you know, we're going to play it by ear. We were told in the informal meeting, meeting that the, the dynamics of, of lunch business here are a little different. So we'll, we'll, we'll find our way. Okay. Now, do you have a projected ratio of food to alcoholic sales? Generally 20 to 25% of our sales, at least at, our, at the Witherspoon Grill, it's about that. Um, again, it's not a bar. It's a restaurant to have a drink, a glass of wine, if you like. So you're projecting 75% food yes. sales. Okay. Yes. And uh, so basically, your f sales of alcoholic beverages are to complement your food sales. Is That's that correct? correct? That's okay. correct. And so the food is the primary business. Correct. Will there be any takeout beer? Not that I know of. I'm unfamiliar with that, and, but I don't foresee it. You have McCaffrey's. You have... Acme, uh, it's just not in our model. Okay. Now, uh, to prevent sales to minors, will uh, BPG become RAMP certified? RAMP is the uh, uh, educational program of the Lick Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board, uh, which uh, all wise licensees become certified about. And it, it covers sales to minors and sales to visibly intoxicated, per, per, excuse me, uh, patrons. Uh, w will you become RAMP certified? Yes, that and SurfSafe. SurfSafe has its own program. Um, we're, that's, it's all about compliance and safety, frankly. Okay. Now, uh, what type of identification cards will you accept as proof of age? Uh, driver's license, but I understand there's a swipe system that uh, uh, Pennsylvania has. Well, it's, so you're going to accept uh, state photo driver's licenses? Correct. Okay. Now, will you uh, obtain a what is known as a transactional ID swipe machine Absolutely. so you could check the cards yes. uh, before the sales of any yes. potential youthful patrons? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, I have no further questions. Any questions from the board? Mr. Chairman, I, I have uh, a question about, I'm familiar with that area. Uh, and um, I, I guess it would be appropriate to ask you about this in terms of parking. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that it's uh, when uh, the bakery was there, it was very difficult to, to park there. Correct. And so I'm assuming people will have to park across West Avenue, is it? West Street? Mm -hmm. West, mm -hmm. West Road? In the uh, Acme area parking lot, and then they would have to cross over west road mm -hmm. to get to your restaurant that's correct uh currently there is no pedestrian uh safety features there i mean how do you think we should deal with that well I, is that is this the arena for it as we had the previous the informal discussion uh, that the um you know that we want our pedestrians to be, our customers to be safe um, the fact that we're dinner only, we hope we won't interact. We don't have banker's hours, for sure. Um, we come in at 1 in the afternoon, open the doors at 5. So we're hoping that that's sort of a ham and egg situation. However, to the safety of the consumer and the pedestrian, it's really a, it's a new dynamic for us. It's a, certainly a busy center. But I know that I've had the assurances from the landlord that we're going to accommodate and make sure that it's safe. That Beyond that... That says, you know, that's our land use guy and our bowler engineering and all the people that are in that involved in the design of that. So and that we, would be brought know, up at a different happy to meeting. Meet your requirements. That, that uh, may I clarify? Wait, hold hold I on. We can't, we can't have two people speaking at once from the court reporter. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Okay. I was going to ask the solicitor if, if there'll be another venue for us to discuss things like parking and configuration and... Yes, uh, I believe, and, and Mr. Lewis can correct me if I'm wrong, that this um, applicant will need conditional use approval, and it depends what they're doing to the existing building, but very possibly land development approval, approval as well. Mm -hmm. So the 
those general health, safety, and welfare matters will come before the board uh, again, certainly. Tonight is just the liquor license transfer. And let me take a moment to advise the board that the board is not approving the issuance of a liquor license to this applicant. The board is merely uh, sort of an intermediate step in saying, we're okay if you transfer the liquor license from elsewhere in Bucks County to our township, but the applicant still has to take that approval back to the Liquor Control Board, jump through all of the Liquor Control Board's hoops, and obtain actual issuance of the permission to transfer that license to this location uh, from the LCB. Well, can I follow up? What would happen if um, you, you got that uh, transfer of the liquor license, but you came before the board at this other meeting and uh, we didn't approve the use? Uh, the what use happens? of the liquor license or the use of the, the what actual? Happens to the, what happens to the liquor license if you cannot? Well, from what I understand, again, not understanding Pennsylvania law that, I mean, understanding it now, the process that uh, the solicitor mentions is an eight-month process. So while this is a little premature, I still have a lot more hoops to go through to come back to you. Um, and it's, I'm willing to make the risk because I, I want it. It's, the other thing is we're BYOB in Princeton, so we don't have a liquor license. And this Blue Plank Grill works quite well. And we wrestled back and forth, did we want to have a license? So this is a gamble of the cost of the liquor license. And if it's denied, then I'll, it'll be back on the market. Well, I'm not saying if the liquor license is denied. I mean, uh, you know, suppose your use for this restaurant is denied by the board here, and but now you have paid for a liquor license. Okay. What can you do with you? You would have to transfer it again to somebody else. I guess else. that's what a knucklehead entrepreneur does. You know, <laughs> just uh, you, you've got to, you know, take it, take a step, you know, buy a ticket, so to speak. Okay. Um, I'm certainly hopeful. Um, as probably many of you know, we've been looking for a long time, and we're, we hope to really be an addition and, a, and a, uh, an attraction and, and, and active in the community. So we won't have to go to the Bonefish Grill? No, no, no. This is a little different. We're mom and pop, frankly. It's my son, okay. myself. And Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, a uh, question for you. Do you have any analysis of liquor licenses per capita in Bucks County or, or Newtown Township? Is that something you looked into? Uh, my client looked to see whether or not there were any uh, t uh, licenses. I don't have an answer on the per capita, but he uh, hired a uh, consultant brokerage firm uh, to try to locate a license exactly within Newtown Township. And at this point in time, there was none available. So that's why he was forced to go outside the township to Quakertown to, uh, to, uh, to bring that license that's in wagon wheel uh, uh, into Newtown Township. Okay, thanks. Any other questions from the board? Mr. Solis? Okay, uh, any other evidence, uh, Mr. Draskus? Uh, yes, I would like to enter the exhibits which were attached to the application. Uh, to be made part of the record and entered into evidence? Certainly. Uh, I believe we've marked as Exhibit B1 a rather large application, yes. including what looks like a, a full lease agreement, uh, plus uh, some, uh, some plans and uh, other documentation. Whatever you submitted to the township when you applied has yes. been marked and entered into the record. Uh, I thank you. All right. And that concludes our presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, any, uh, any other board comments? Um, Mr. Chairman, I think it would be appropriate to entertain, um, before we ask for public comment, uh, entertain a motion to adopt um, a resolution, and I don't have the next number, Mr. Lewis. 2022-R-7. Approving the uh, intermunicipal transfer of a liquor license uh, to the property located at 3 uh, West Road. Do I have such a motion? I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Mm -hmm. 
and a second for the transfer of the liquor license. Okay. Okay, that, that motion dies for lack of a second. Um, before we uh, mo close the hearing, um, I think it would be appropriate to ask for public comment. Yes. Any comment from the public? John D. April, Newtown Grant. Here you guys go again, stopping a business that wants to come to Newtown, stopping them. I mean, this is for the liquor license, but you, you asked about parking earlier. If you listen to the applicant's uh, uh, comments, his restaurant is going to be open when the bank is closed, so there's parking there. But uh, don't stop businesses from coming to Newtown. They want to come here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? All right. Um, um, no, no other comments. Um, I think we, uh, if, if the motion to approve the resolution died for a lack of a second, um, it might be appropriate for the board to entertain a motion to deny the application. I'll make the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. And this is a, to be clear. This is a motion to. A deny the, the, the application, the for, the application for intermunicipal transfer of liquor license. Okay, just for the liquor license. Mm -hmm. Yep, just for the liquor license. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, any other further comments from the board? From the public? Call the question. All those in favor of denying the liquor license, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Motion passes 3-2. Motion passes three two. Okay. And uh, it's appropriate to close the hearing at this point. I'd yes. like to thank everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. We're moving right along. Brings us to there's no land development this evening, so it brings us to reports of officials. And I'm feeding, feeding back somehow. Could it be the microphone on the podium, I guess? Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Uh, the first report of official that I have is the engineer's report. Thank you. Uh, first item we have tonight is the local share account grant resolution for the business common sidewalk project. Um, as you're aware, we, per, we uh, prepared an application for this grant to provide the connections within the, biz, the business commons with the sidewalk. Um, the entire application has been provided to the board. One item that is not included um, was a letter of support from Steve Sanacera's office, which we did receive. So we will be submitting that with the grant. It just didn't make it into this packet. So um, this project will provide just the missing sidewalk connections, you know, in the in the business commons area. So based on that, we recommend approval of the resolution um, to request the local share assessment grant in the amount of nine hundred and ninety four thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars. Do we have such a motion? Do we have a second? second. OK. I uh, have motions and seconds. Uh, any further um, discussion from the board? Mr. Chairman, if I may, okay. does this include uh, a couple of little stretches of sidewalk outside of the business commons area? There's, I, a, there's a few areas. There's one area that's near Fred Beans to provide that connection, right. um, as well as a section on Lower Dolington that didn't make it into the trail project. So there's a few areas that are outside, but overall, we're providing those connections that ultimately can get us to that business commons area. Do you recall on the Lower Dolington, uh, was it from Yorkshire Drive up a little ways to the, uh, I guess it goes to the uh, Pico line? It's beyond that, but, but yeah, it's, it's Yorkshire and then north. Up to so Devon small, Road, I think. Yeah, there's a small section there. Uh -huh. I mean, we're getting... Um, um, requests from the Hillhaven residents about you being able to use the the Lower Darlington Trail mm -hmm. and I, I they've been saying it, it should have been moved up further and trying to explain to them 
what the process was and we didn't have enough money for that. Exactly, yep. But uh, this is a possibility for them to get access to the trail somehow? It would, yep. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, to just with Lower Dolington, we're also seeking, you know, other grant opportunities eventually to, to finish that complete project too. So allowing, you know, us to request this portion will help um, in that area. Right. So, but to uh, cross the street, uh, cross Lower Dolington, there would have to be some kind of uh, crosswalk or stop sign or something like that. Yep. So at Yorkshire, as part of the the trail project now, there's going to be a stop sign and, and pedestrian crossings there. Yeah. So, okay, thank you very much. Yep. You got a couple of my questions. So oh, that's good. No, I, I don't have to ask them. So we have um, boards questions. Uh, any questions from the public? Because we have a motion and a second. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the resolution for um, applying for the Local share assessment grant, if I've worded that correctly. Um, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. All right, next item is we are seeking authorization to advertise the 2022 Liquid Fuels Road Program. You all are aware this is just the township's you know, annual road program um, included in the packets. I've included the, uh, the map, which outlines the streets um, for the base bid and the alternate bid. The, I'll just run through the base bid quickly. Um, we're including a few streets there, Primrose Court, Iris Court, Sterling Street, Taylor Avenue, Norwood Avenue, Millstone Drive, North Congress Street, and North Chancellor Street. And again, these are all provided to us by the Public Works Department. Um, we have approximately 20 other locations for alternate bids, and the way that we've set it up, as we've done in years past, is, um, you know, we have our base bid amount, and then if, you know, prices come in favorably, which, you know, we've been seeing prices all over the place this year. Hopefully we can add on, you know, different streets so that we can get a full contract there. So uh, the base bid is roughly 1.73 miles of paving and all of the alternate bids combined is roughly three and a half miles. So we, we likely won't be able to do all of those alternate bids this year, but it's always a good, you know, gauge to get the pricing in and um, be able to add streets as we have budget for it, depending on how the costs come in. So um, ideally we would be, we're seeking authorization to advertise and we would hopefully award the bid in, in April. So tonight we're just seeking authorization to advertise. Um, let, me, let me get a motion in a second and then I have a question as yep. well. Um, there's a motion to authorize the advertisement of the liquid fuels program. So moved. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Um, have a motion and a second. Any questions from the board other than me? L let me ask my question. Uh, are Colonial Drive, Pensewood Drive, Sentinel <laughs> Drive, and Qu Qu Quaker Drive on the list? They are included as alternate bids. Thank you. Yep. Uh, any other questions? Seeing none from the board. Any from the pu public? Let me call the question. All those in favor of authorizing the advertisement of the liquid, liquid fuel, fuel program, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Five zero. Thank you. All right. Next item is um, financial security release number four for the Three Pens Trail project. This project is complete, so this is the last um, financial security release. So we, based on our inspection of the work completed, we recommend that the township release the amount of $83,577.70 to the developer from the security that's held. Okay, do we have that motion? I'll make it. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of releasing the financial security uh, for Three Pens Trail, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 5-0. All right, so our final item tonight is just an update on the improvements at Sycamore Street in that corridor. Um, so to date, as everyone's aware, the Public Works Department has 
completed the, the crosswalk striping and some addi um, additional signage has been added. Um, mm -hmm. In terms of the lighting, you know, we had made re recommendations um, in terms of upgrading the lighting to LED. So one thing that we have done is we've completed a lighting analysis to determine the wattage that would be appropriate and adequate um, at these crosswalk locations. So we've completed that. We've also solicited quotes from lighting contractors to, to upgrade those lights. So at this point, we're reviewing the quotes that we've received. Um, so we're at a point that we're very closely going to be making the recommendation you know, to, to move forward with those upgrades. We're just still reviewing the quotes at this point. We, we were just waiting on one more you know, per the procurement law, but that's sort of where we stand with that. And I think that was one of the things that not to interrupt you, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, go ahead. Mm -hmm. I think that was one of the uh, items that we actually already gave some uh, authorization to, to go ahead with. Exactly, yep. So, yeah. you know, we'll, we'll work, you know, once we, you know, issue that formal review of the bid, you know, we'll work directly with Public Works and, and uh, Township staff to, to get that done. Um, another item that we've completed is that we've reviewed the site distances um, for the visibility at the Silo Drive intersection. Um, we've provided some information for in terms of the distances for no parking ordinances as well as we will be making recommendations again very shortly once we finalize that report in terms of which parking spaces to remove um, along that corridor just to allow for greater sight distance for people turning in and out off of Sycamore and in that area. So again, that's, that sort of work can be done also with the Public Works Department. They can go out there and, and stripe as needed. Um, Another, regarding the speed, we had made that recommendation to pursue the speed reduction with PennDOT. We've been reviewing the speed data that was provided by the police department last month. Um, we're also going to be collecting other data. Um, we've started preliminary discussions with PennDOT as well um, in order for that process to move forward. So we're still sort of in the data collection time frame, but that's moving forward. So we've begun those preliminary discussions with PennDOT as well. So we're moving forward. So um, happy to answer any questions. Any questions? This is a pretty thorough report. And I thank you. And I mean, with all the different projects, you've been, been very busy. Yep. So just one short thing. Any timeline for when we will receive your, I guess, call the final report? It'll either be this week or next week. We're very close to, to yeah. finishing that up. So that'll okay. have in there um, the, the lighting analysis and the site distance analysis. We wanted to make sure that those were completed and included in that report, and then we'll distribute that to the township. Uh, what about the, uh, the speed issue? The speed issue, that's something that we're still pursuing. So that's sort of an ongoing process at this point. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that recommendation will still stand in the report, and, you know, we're, we're just still, that's an ongoing process, so we're still working on that now. Uh, okay. Uh, so there will be a, a, a kind of a separate report regarding what your findings are with regard to that? There will be, a, ideally, and again, I'm, I'm not a traffic engineer. I can defer to Derek on that, but, you know, we'll be preparing speed analysis and data and additional reports to provide to PennDOT. So that will be shared with the township. So basically whatever PennDOT requires for us to pursue that speed reduction, you know, we'll provide that to the township as well. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you, Leanna. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's move on to the solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. First item on our report this evening, if the board will recall, uh, it recently uh, came to a collective bargaining agreement with the firefighters uh, union and um, there were revisions required to the firefighter pension ordinance in response to that collective bargaining agreement. Um, an ordinance has been drafted and presented to the board in its packet. Uh, if the board is of a mind, it would be a motion to authorize the advertisement of this ordinance uh, for the board's consideration at its next meeting. Okay, do we have a second? A motion and a second. Any discussion from the board? Any questions from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of authorizing the advertisement of the firefighter pension ordinance amendment? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5 nothing. Thank you. Uh, 
Last item on our report this evening is uh, board consideration of a settlement agreement with Orleans Home Builders uh, on the Brookshire Estates Phase Two uh, matter. Uh, it's, it is a matter of litigation. Uh, the township was sued by the developer uh, seeking to have the township accept dedication of the public improvements in uh, Brookshire Phase Two, uh, which is up on uh, Washington Crossing you know, Road in Galax Lane. Um, there was only one house as a part of that phase that was built in Newtown, but uh, because there was work done in Newtown, there was the uh, vacation of a road and the relocation of that road, um, Galax Lane. Um, they enact, they uh, entered into agreements with the township for that work. Um, the township held uh, is holding a um, secure a um, surety bond for that work. Uh, they were sued to re to have uh, released from that bond. The township filed a counterclaim against the developer and the bonding company seeking to draw down the money uh, to use it to uh, perform stormwater management improvements uh, that were being, uh, problems were being experienced by two of the residents on uh, Galax Lane. Um, it has been in discussions and settlement discussions for uh, well over a year now, possibly two years or more. And um, we have a settlement agreement. Uh, that agreement requires the township to um, uh, accept dedication of uh, the easements and uh, road rights of way that are, is required to accept dedication of pursuant to the plans. Orleans is posting $60,000 to pay for the stormwater improvements, which we have been advised by our engineer is uh, enough uh, to cover those uh, improvements. Uh, the township will do the work. Uh, and before the board this evening is uh, the settlement agreement. Um, if the board is of a mind, it would be a motion to authorize uh, entering into the settlement agreement with Orleans Home Builders for the Brookshire Estates Phase Two uh, litigation. Do we have such, <clears throat> excuse me, do we have such a motion? To so moved. Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the settlement agreement. Uh, I just, uh, any questions from the board? I, I just have one, and I think I know the answer that the, the, the residents affected uh, are in, a, in agreement with this. Settlement. Yes, um, they, they are. Uh, they've been looking forward to this. It's been a long uh, road for them. Um, they will finally get their fix, and they are pleased that uh, the amount of money that Orleans is posting has been increased from uh, the original $40,000 uh, to $60,000 to cover the cost of those improvements. Great. Any other questions? Any questions from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of the consideration of the approval of the settlement agreement with Brookshire Estates, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank you very much. And that concludes our report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. I'll turn it over to Township Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. General fund balance this evening is $4,098,655. <clears throat> Plan expiration is before the board. No action required. This evening we have uh, Chief Hearn with us to give his monthly report. Evening, Chief. Evening, sir. Good evening, board members. February police report for 2022. We documented 1,622 calls for service, logged just under 23,000 patrol miles, had 17 arrests, four for DUIs, three forgeries, two thefts, which included an $81 theft from Ulta, seven narcotics possessions, and one criminal mischief. There were 11 new cases referred to detectives, which included six frauds, a child line report, two death investigations, one terroristic threats, and one harassment. 54 traffic crashes with two injuries, 16 non-injuries, 16 property damages, two hit and runs, one auto ped, and 17 deer collisions. There were 166 traffic citations issued and 176 warnings issued. Obviously, the order pedestrian struck was on 225 at 10 p.m. A 58-year-old female was exiting the Sycamore Grill on the 200 block of North Sycamore Street wearing dark clothing and made contact with a northbound vehicle. She refused medical treatment, and the scene was cleared by police. 
There was two targeting enforcement efforts for truck enforcement, one on the bypass at Lennonhurst and one on River Road, resulting in 26 inspections, 11 citations, 20 warnings, three vehicles placed out of service as well as one driver and one vehicle was towed from the scene. Public service announcements. This is for the public's information. Please do not make police reports via social media or sending emails. If it's an emergency, please dial 911 um, or uh, our non-emergency number at 215-328-8524. Uh, we do not monitor social media 24-7, so that's the public's advice. Also, we added a handle with care crime watch registry on our social media and our Facebook and our township website. So if you have uh, family members have firsthand information regarding people with autism, Down syndrome, uh, dementia, et cetera, they can upload photos and emergency contact information in that. So our first responders will have that information readily available for them. Uh, once again, like I said, our frauds are up. So make sure you watch what you're doing. If it's too good to be true, it probably is. Don't be scammed by offers. Uh, yeah, by your contacts via cell phone, email, phone calls, whatever it may be. And there's three dates coming up, April 14th. Uh, we will be at the Touch a Trunk event from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. On April 30th is our DEA drug take back at the Township Building from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And on May 22nd, mark your calendar for 8.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. We're having a Cops, Classic Cars, and Coffee community event at Veterans Park. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. I see deer collisions seem are still kind of high. Deer collisions are up. They're not looking before they cross the street, sir. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. All right. Any questions for the chief? Any other questions? Chief, okay. is there uh, in May um, an event? At St. Andrew's Church, perhaps, uh, in honor of fallen uh, policemen who have died in service? Yes, yeah, some meetings are still ongoing. That's our annual uh, Memorial Day Mass at St. Andrew's. It's usually at 7, 7 p.m. In, e in the evening. Uh, I actually don't recall the date. The meetings are still ongoing. But I will advise the board and the township as, that, as we get closer. Okay, so a date hasn't yet been picked, I guess. Nah, I think it's like the first Monday or second, second Monday of May. Okay. I don't know for sure. Right, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank thank you. you, Chief. <clears throat> thank you, Chief. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> next item under my report, uh, we had solicited uh, a proposal from an IT service for the assistance in the police department uh, from a company called Pr Premier Technologies. Um, this company would be essentially responsible for setting up the new Cody system. Uh, the price they gave was $100 an hour uh, to be billed in block hours so we can sort of manage um, how many hours we purchase at a time from, from the vendor. Uh, so the appropriate motion would be uh, authorization to approve, motion to authorize the approval of the service contract with Premier Technologies Incorporated. Would someone like to make that motion? I need a second. Second. Thank you. You have a motion and a second. Uh, I have a question. I think I saw it in the manager's report. This is actually uh, that, that this provider works well with Cody uh, and is actually um, somewhat less per, per block. That's, that's correct. The cost is a little less per block. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, seeing none, uh, do I have any questions from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of this authorization to approve the service contract with Premier Technologies, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Next item under my report <coughs> is the chief has come across a justice assistance grant that is uh, currently being offered uh, with the what the grant is for is the purchase of um, body-worn cameras and in-car uh, camera systems. Um, if you recall, we had allocated $50,000 under the capital plan for the, the purchase of body-worn cameras. Um, this grant is limited to, to $250,000. However, 
the amount of money that we were sort of anticipating would be fifty thousand dollars a year over a five-year period so it's not <coughs> a it's not going to pay for the entire system however it will uh, assist the township immensely if we were mm -hmm. to be fortunate enough to get this grant so the appropriate motion would be authorization to for the chairman to execute this execute the justice assistant grant application for police worn body camera and in car systems. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any questions from the board? Yeah, is this uh, possibly something we can use uh, ARP funds for on our side? Uh, since the township has designated the uh, American Rescue Plan money as, as uh, lost revenue, yes. Okay. This, if we don't get this grant, that could be an item that okay. would be qualified. Thanks. And we had 50000 budgeted for this year. That's correct. Yep. Any other questions from the board? From the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of the authorization to execute the Justice Assistant Grant application, uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Thank you. I have one other, one other item under my report, Mr. Chairman. I mm -hmm. would like to note that, uh, just for the record, that the, uh, the board met in executive session to discuss matters of pending litigation prior to the, the regular scheduled meeting. Uh, okay. That would be with Orleans uh, Home Builders. Um, <clears throat> we did have, we reached out to our pension advisor, uh, pension investment advisor, uh, to sort of determine if any of the township's investments were held in uh, Russian-owned stock. Um, they got back to us that there was one investment vehicle uh, identified as Aberdeen uh, that does have a small amount of its portfolio in uh, Russian-owned stocks. Um, their suggestion is that we sort of hold tight rather than dropping the Aberdeen investment vehicle at this point uh, and to see if, if Aberdeen sells off those portions of stock when uh, the Russian stock market reopens. Um, so that was the correspondence we had received. Um, I just wanted to get any feedback from the board that you may have. I had a question or two just for clarification. Uh, we don't know when the Russian market's going to open back up. No. <laughs> uh, and if, if we asked our portfolio manager to, or pension fund manager to make this change, would we have to like come all the way out of the Aberdeen fund? Yes, the whole Aberdeen fund would have to be dropped and a whole new investment vehicle uh, implemented in its place. I guess we don't know how well it's performing. That would be up to them to make yeah. a recommendation yeah. at that point. Um, okay, I'll see if there's any other questions. I think those are my two main. I mean, I, f I feel strongly about this, but it's the, the timing that, uh, you know, I, I, I hate to lose the whole fund when, you know, maybe maybe the, the portfolio manager is going to divest of that stock anyway. Uh, others? I feel that we should uh, closely monitor this if there's a way of doing it. Uh, so that we can clearly get out of this. I would be for that. Um, is there a time limit? As you say, when the Russian stocks open, like, yeah, there's no yeah, it's, idea. It's unknown. It's, it's still closed as of today. Right. And things are only getting worse. So uh, I would just like to state that I am for taking any action should it become available to us in the manner in which you described. Mm -hmm to get out of that. Mr. Chairman? Yep. Well, waiting for the Russian stock market to open is up to the Russians, and that means we're not being proactive. Uh, I really would like to be more proactive in some regard. I know uh, people uh, buy and sell funds uh, pretty easily. Uh, I don't you know, for up, up to me, I would give a message to this particular fund that you mentioned 
what was the name of that fund? Uh, Aberdeen. That even if they have a minuscule amount of Russian stock, we don't like it, and therefore we would uh, consider selling out the fund and getting into another fund that does not have uh, Russian stock. I believe there must be many funds out there available that give us an equal or better return even than this fund. I'm not an expert in that, but I want to be proactive in this because I'm not going to leave it up to the Russians to decide when the stock market is open so that, you know, the decision is made at that time. By then, it's, it's too late for us to take any kind of, you know, make any kind of statement, let's say. And I know that in Pennsylvania, there's uh, moves going on by the uh, public employees retirement system where uh, they voted to divest themselves of, of Russian stocks. And Pennsylvania uh, is also considering uh, doing the same. So um, I don't know what the proper action would be, but I think perhaps you know, some kind of a, a, a statement or a letter to the effect that we would prefer not to have any investment in uh, Russian stocks and not wait for, you know, Russia to open up its stock market. That's my opinion. If I may weigh in also. Uh, I'm, I'm, I like what our advisor is telling us to hold on. Let's see what happens if Aberdeen pulls out. I, I think I want to trust our advisor, but I do agree I don't want to be in funds that are uh, uh, giving any kind of financial gain to Russia at this point. I think we, we probably could draft a letter asking our investment manager to start looking for alternatives and to also pass that along to Aberdeen, Aberdeen, whoever runs that fund, uh, let them know of at least one of their customers' displeasure, uh, and then be ready to make a move if we have a better investment that doesn't involve Russian companies. Uh, I think that's what I'd like to do. Mr. Clabo, I mean, I, uh, you must have kind of read my mind because my thought was, could we, could we strongly instruct our pension fund manager to sell the Russian holdings as, as soon as that uh, becomes a possibility for them? When the, but I like how you said it better, I think. I think so, the point I was trying to make, I don't want to make a hasty decision and take a beating on our investments. I, you know, right. it is what it is. The money is where it is. Uh, if we can get out of it cleanly without losing investment, uh, I think why, that's the best way to go. But, why don't I just take a consensus of the board and reach out to the pension uh, investment advisor and just advise him of this conversation this evening? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I can come up with that idea. Okay. It's prob prob probably a good idea. I also like... Uh, sending some kind of message to that investment fund as well, maybe through our stock broker. Yeah. That will let them know. If it's possible, it. at least we can ask him to do it. I don't know what kind of communications he has with the funds, but, you know, can't hurt. Great. Strongly worded message from him to them might, might be helpful. I will reach out to him tomorrow. And you have what you need to do that. Thank and that, you. That's all I have under my report, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right, minutes, bills, lists, and reports. Uh, Ms. Snyder? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of February 23rd, 2022. A motion, do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Any conversation from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of accepting the minutes of February 23rd, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes 3-2. I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, our funds of in the amount of $327,928.06. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Who wants to second it? Kyle. Mr. Davis. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any... Um, Questions from the board, from the public? Seeing none, call the question. Those in favor of paying our bills, uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, thank you. 4-1. All 
I'd like to make a motion to approve our interfund transfers in the amount of three hundred and twenty-eight thousand one hundred and ten dollars and ninety-six cents. I have a motion. Do we have a second? I have a motion and a second. Any conversation from the board? From the public? All those in favor of paying our bill, uh, the transfers, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 5-0. Okay, that brings us to our second round of public comment. And just ask that you come to the come to the podium and state your name and where you're from. We just uh, impl I, I just implore everyone to refrain from personal attacks and name calling. John Diego. John Diego. John D. April, Newtown Grant, biggest and the best. Um, can't believe you guys uh, stopped that uh, restaurant from getting his liquor license. I mean, I know some of you guys love to drink up there. But, um, I mean, it's it becoming a standard thing now with you guys, uh, not letting businesses come in. I was sitting in the Chick-fil-A line this afternoon and, uh, you know, wondering if, you know, this development would probably be finished now if you guys would have proved it, but you had to listen to Johnny Mac and his Karens uh, say about the, they didn't want an old Navy because I was in on the plan. Uh, I mean, I don't know if you could have separated the plan. I don't know if you could get back to the, the uh, owner of the shopping center and tell him, hey, come through with your Chick-fil-A plan. It's about time. You do something with that because a lot of people are messed up. I don't know if it's caused accidents and stuff, but uh, you know, if, if it hasn't, it will because it's terrible. Um, I mean, there you go again. Uh, you, know, you allow all these uh, people to build, whether it's through mistakes or uh, uh, because you're, you're getting some free land that they couldn't build on anyway, and, and so, some of that land, and uh, you know, so you allow the builders, but you're not allowing the businesses. I don't know what's the matter with you guys. I mean, you want to get uh, 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 some uh, money out of it with the uh, um, you know, earned income tax, uh, some of it at least. Uh, not, you know, if it's Newtown people, you can get uh, you know, you know, all their earned income tax. Um, sounds like a good thing. Uh, it's not over uh, by McCafferty's, where everybody complains about parking. There's nothing you can do about that. Uh, but, hey, since you guys want, you mustn't like chicken or fish. That's all I can say. Um, also, I mean, you talk about Sycamore Street improvements. Uh, you realize that there's historic properties on that corner across from the Green Parent. And uh, you know, there were a couple of uh, suggestions for uh, developing that land. I don't know where they're at now, but uh, you know, eventually that, that is going to be developed. I mean, there's no land in Newtown that's not going to be developed unless uh, somebody with a lot of money buys it. And uh, you know, you got to consider that, what's going on on Sycamore Street and what you're going to do with that, that property. Because I said there are, uh, I believe, two historic properties on that land. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. D'April. Any other public comment? All right, seeing none, we'll move along to old business. And under old business, we have fire services agreement with the borough, update and consideration of authorizing solicitor to draft agreement with borough. Um, I guess it would be appropriate for me to um, go through uh, just a couple of highlights of the agreement as it stands right now. Uh, and again, this is just authorizing the uh, solicitor to write these into a, a formal agreement. Uh, right now we have 
discuss compensation with the borough, and um, Ms. Snyder can correct me if I get anything wrong. But uh, we've discussed a, a compensation of one hundred and fifty-four thousand three hundred sixty-five dollars for the first for this first year, the year of twenty twenty-two. It's retroactive to July to January 1st. Uh, so we'll get a lump sum payment in the first four months uh, and then monthly thereafter. Uh, there'll be an annual increment increase of 5% per year. There are two clauses, one for fire service, services increase. If there's an increase in services from year to year, the um, Borough will pay their fair share, which is 10.3% of the, of the um, cost increase. Same goes for capital increases. The borough would pay 10.3% uh, for each year of, that, we, that we purchase a capital expense. And in addition, there will be a cap of 10% of the township's operating budget for fire service coverage. So that, that figure this past year was uh, almost 1.5 million. Uh, so 10% of that is a, is a large number. Um, but um, one of the things that we wanted to do was establish a fire services commission. Could be a committee, could be a you know, we could give it another name. That's the Fire Services Commission is what we came up with to discuss ongoing fire services and to prevent any major increases in any given year. Uh, other than that, um, we have a five-year term. Uh, and um, one clause that we put in the five-year term is a special review after one year to make sure that uh, the agreement is working as, as planned. And of course, the, um, the Fire Services Commission would be a, an appropriate place for some of those discussions. And then, <clears throat> and then out of those discussions, would, after that first year, we'd have a report to the board and the borough council for, for the council's sake. Um, those are the highlights. I'd be happy to try to answer any, any questions. I do have a question. Yep. The Fire Service Commission, is this just a recommendation kind of yes. entity? Okay, yes. they don't have any authority to make decisions. And and that's and not the plan. Yeah, okay. that, that's what was discussed. Now we need to get that in writing. Yeah. So we have to make sure the solicitor has that. I'm going to write it down. Yeah, I don't want to cede any of our authority to uh, another entity. Correct. Other than that, I, I don't have a problem with the agreement. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Any other? Mr. Chairman, can I yes, make yes, a please. comment? Uh, yes. I always had a problem with the uh, formulaic approach to how this is calculated. And one of the concerns I have is uh, I know the uh, fire department is applying for the third time, I believe, or the fourth time for a safer grant to hire, is it five more firefighters to cover a weekend, is that correct? My understanding is it would be five, but <clears throat> we're, we're hiring a deputy chief this year. And Mr. Lewis, you can tell me if I'm wrong. No, that's correct. So it would be four going forward. Well, and I also heard last time that we were denied the safer grant primarily because the authority issuing that grant felt that Newtown did not have the resources after the three-year grant period to pay for those uh, five new firefighters. So after three years, uh, we're going to have to find new money, and this is a five-year contract that you're making with uh, the borough, where after three years, we're going to have significant more expenses. So I am also kind of not in favor of the five-year term and would have hoped it would have been maybe a shorter term, like three years. And if that would be the will of the board, that would could be something that's negotiated because it was discussed in, 
in the uh, negotiations. I, I can go along with a three-year term for that reason as well. I think it's a good point that you brought up. Uh, you did mention, though, with cost increases, there would be some discussion with the borough on. Yes. Right. So, but with that formulaic yeah. approach, it's only ten percent. Whatever the cost increase is, their share is only ten percent. Right. I mean, that's it's not adequate, in my opinion. On that. I see what you're saying. Do we need to have something? I don't want to renegotiate all this, but yeah. is there some? Should we be some clause like uh, where if there's unexpected expense that we didn't anticipate, you know, like a, a special assessment like you do in like an HOA when you have to replace something in the common area? I don't know. Just a suggestion. Would that be some, uh, Mr. Lewis? Here? May I suggest some sort yeah. of reopener sure. clause? Yeah. Meaning, if the township does get the the fire. Or the safer grant, sorry, and we do end up hiring the additional firefighters for 24 7 coverage. That there'll be even seven day, I would say, even seven day coverage. That there be some sort of reopener language that would renegotiate that segment of the, that portion of that contract. I was looking at the solicitor to get that suggestion, but yes, absolutely. solicitors yeah. happily writing away yeah, yeah, and taking notes. Uh, and uh, the, uh, if additional firefighters are hired for a twenty-four-seven coverage, I would say any any additional hires for any additional coverage over Monday to Friday, six to six. I would still uh, triggers what? What triggers, triggers what? triggers renegotiation of the distribution of uh, or, or would that be a capital increase triggering the 10.3 percent clause which I understand well, it's not capital. Yeah, certain yeah, board yeah, members do that not be a service increase that, that would fall under the service it's increase. not in, capital. Our, in our discussions that's what we, the way we looked at it that would okay be a service uh, we're going to need to define fire service increase and capital increase right because that's technically not capital okay that's personnel well, yeah. if you had a three-year term, I think then we're kind of covered to renegotiate no matter what because uh, anticipating we're going to need more firefighters and more expenses after three years, you know, it makes sense to have this uh, contract uh, terminate in three years and we can then reno renegotiate. And at least we'd have a template to go by from what we've established now. It, 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 Ms. Ms. Snyder can help me out here, but I, I think in the negotiations that, I mean, they wanted, they wanted three. And, and we asked them for more. So. It, it, I don't it, see that as a sticking point. I think that would be fine. If that's what, okay. if that's what we wanted, that's what we would, uh, no. I, I, I'm, sure not, I'm not married to the number five. Yeah, so. since it's a first-time agreement, right? I mean, mm -hmm. we don't want to box ourselves in for five years. No, know. that's why we yeah. have a one-year one year review yeah. to go over everything, how it worked the first year, and see if there's any adjustments. Uh, you know, we thought, we thought five years, but uh, I understand your reasoning for three years. Uh, yeah. I don't think that's wrong at all. I think that's definitely could be negotiated. I think I like the three-year idea and the clause about the, if we have to hire. Yeah, the reopener. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Sanders, do you, I'll give you uh, my sketch of the plan that I borrowed from you. Yep. And uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, sounds good. I think we have, do we have a motion? We don't have a motion yet. Ah, okay. I didn't know if we had a <laughs> So, yes, we need a motion to authorize uh, the solicitor to uh, prepare an agreement. And do we have such a motion? Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion from the board? Any from the public? Seeing none, I'll call the question. Those in favor of the authorization to uh, um, write the agreement uh, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, passes 5 0. Thank you. All right. On to the Ar discussion of ARPA funds. I have to find, I have all my 
other documentation here. Res American Rescue Plan discussion. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Manager, do you have a report that you'd like to offer to us? So we had uh, reached out to uh, all board members for sort of to take the list that we had provided of, of necessary or our thoughts on what the money could be spent on. Um, and the board responded uh, with thoughts. Um, and so we're sort of seeking direction to do maybe begin the processes of a few projects. Um, and those projects would include uh, upgrades to the uh, public meeting room AV system uh, with an estimated amount of about $100,000. Uh, begin the replacement process of age workstations and servers. Um, that would not be an all at once expense. That would be sort of over time. Um, the purchase, I mean, uh, uh, all of mm -hmm. these will require separate resolutions. So this is more just our ideas at this point uh, based on the board's feedback. Um, the replacement, uh, ordering and replacement of the uh, 2001 six wheel uh, dump that we use for plowing and salting in public works and replacement of the boilers in the public works and the administration facilities for roughly 80,000. So those are the, the four projects that seem to be of a priority to the board and we're just sort of seeking a uh, consensus of, of to sort of move forward in that direction with, with those specific projects. I just wanted to point out that that dump truck was 2001. Yes. That's tw 20 years old. It's a old classic right. vehicle. Yes. <laughs> wow. And just to mention about the, the boilers, don't they need like constant attention and we've been sp spending a lot of money on maintenance? And yeah, we, we spend a lot of money on the boilers. Um, was it, I'm trying to find it. It's about $10,000 a year just mm -hmm. on, on maintaining the boilers. So, they, I mean, they're... They're approaching 10 years of lifespan. It's, it's time. They, they only last about 10 years each, so. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with the list. Uh, I did think we should probably consider doing something with the ambulance squad with the crisis that they're having, well, statewide we're having. I think we mentioned it before. I actually set it on a Zoom call for something at the state legislature about it. Anyway, I think it's something we should consider trying to help the ambulance squad out with. <clears throat> Any others? Mr. Lewis, does that give you enough to go on to work towards mm -hmm. and, and, and even maybe even thinking about ambulance squad? I know I mentioned about fi fire services as well, but... Mm -hmm. You have my reports. <laughs> um, Mr. Chandler, can I make a comment? Obviously, yes. I'm very much interested in the AV uh, system here, and uh, I'm not sure 100,000 is adequate, but it depends on what you're recommending and the priorities. So it would be interesting to see what you would recommend. Thank you very much. So just to piggyback on that, I think that process will be more of an RFP process to either put out an RFP for design services um, to specify what we're looking for, or it could be essentially a proposal to upgrade the system, tell us what you're proposing to give us. Um, so there's two directions. We'll sort of kick it back and forth, see what other municipalities have recently done that have upgraded their systems uh, to see what the best route is that we'll recommend and we'll sort of proceed from there. So it's a, it's not an immediate project. It's, it's a step project over time. So that one's going to take a little bit of time to get, get implemented, let's say. Any further discussion? Sounds good. All right. I've kind of reached the end of my agenda. Any, any, uh, any new business? Seeing none, uh, we've already announced that we had an executive session. So that uh, brings us to adjournment. And without objection, I will 
Call us adjourned. Thank you all for coming.